fine so i think we can start now all right in the last session we were uh, doing rear body dynamics we had quickly uh, brushed up all the basic uh, concepts as such and we had done some problem practice right but that was not uh, good enough so i plan to do a little bit more today on rigid body dynamics the problems and then we move to the gravitation chapter okay so without any further discussion let us move forward all of you here is the first question start doing it What is the first thing that comes in your mind? Which principle will be used here? Correct. Work energy theorem, or you can con uh, you can say conservation of mechanical energy also. Is angular momentum conserved? Is angular momentum conserved? About the hinge is angular momentum conserved why why it is not conserved because gravity is the external torque about that hinge so you can't do that see many times you know when we look at the question we tend to uh, correlate something which we have done earlier right you might have seen something similar previously you're like oh there i have done conservation of angular momentum so quickly that is the first thing that comes in your mind so when you look at the question another similar question should not come in your mind what should come in your mind is the concept understand the scenario then only start your solution i hope there is no difference between i speaking without mic or with mic because when i speak with mic i don't need to shout so i'm not in a mood of shouting anyone close to the answer aditya already got it Hey, Shetesh, you 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 did conservation of angular momentum or energy? Why? You realized mistake. What mistake? What is the mistake that you realized? What is the mistake? The mistake is. rushing very fast it is not that you ignored here you know things but you went into the wrong direction because you know you are ready to run as soon as you look at the diagram you like okay fine let me use conservation angular momentum when you do like this you will make silly error every time okay so be very careful i am seeing that thing with you so take a pause take a 2 second pause every time when you start solving a question understood and you don't need to be first one to be wrong because if you are if you are the first one typically first one to answer will definitely make a silly error getting it so this is not great fourth or fifth where you have to answer first take a pause you'll get the right answer i know anyways so 
uh, we need to find the angular speed when it becomes the vertical scenario. So, according to work energy theorem, W is equal to change in potential energy plus change in kinetic energy. W is zero. Work done by all the forces is zero. Gravity is doing work, but for gravity, we are considering the potential energy. And the hinge forces, are the hinge forces doing any work? Hinge forces doing any work? No, hinge forces are not doing any work because the point of suspension is not moving. Displacement is zero of the point of application of the force. So you can very well write U1 plus K1 is equal to U2 plus K2 like this. Okay. Now you can, you have to choose zero potential energy line. So you can say that this is my zero potential energy line. I think most of you have chosen that way only. All right. So, uh, you know, when you write the potential energy, you can either consider it as one single rigid body, or you can write potential energy plus rod plus potential energy of the particle separately. Also, you can write and add them up. So whenever such kind of composite body is there, I am more comfortable in taking it separately for the potential energy. Kinetic energy, you can take it combined. You get the same answer. So initial potential energy, you can see that the center of mass of the rod is also at zero line and the particle also at the zero line. So U1 is zero for the rod, zero for the particle. Plus kinetic energy is also zero. Everything is at rest. Then U2 is what? When the rod becomes vertical, what is the potential energy of the rod? U2 is what? minus of mg l by 2 it comes down then potential energy of the point mass is minus of mg l right minus it is going down potential energy now kinetic energy kinetic energy can be written as if there is a fixed axis you can directly write it as half i about the fixed axis omega square is there a fixed axis Clearly there is a fixed axis. The hinge point is a fixed axis. So you can write it as half of moment of inertia about the fixed axis, ML square by three for the rod plus for the point mass ML square into omega square. What do you get when you simplify this omega as? Option number one. I hope all of you are getting that. this okay now option number one is the answer all right that is fine now if i uh, let's say extend the question and if i ask you to find out the hinge force tell me the hinge force when the rod is vertical how much it is find out If you draw the free body diagram, let's say hinge forces HX and HY. Hariharan and Pranav got some answer. Then what else? What are the force it will have? Gravity force. Okay. There will be gravity force from the center of the rod of how much? Mg. And from the edge of the rod another mg 
okay is there any acceleration is there any acceleration any acceleration there is acceleration you forget that it is moving in a circle okay centripetal acceleration so this point is also moving in a circle and the center of mass is also moving in a circle fine what you could do is uh, find out the center of mass position for rod and the point mass from this edge so that would be m into l by 2 plus m into l divided by m plus m which is 2m so this is a uh, 3l by 4 so at a distance of 3l by 4 this is the center of mass for both the things so the centripetal force would be towards the center which will be omega square distance of center of mass 3l by 4 this is the acceleration centripetal acceleration is it clear to all of you type in so net force towards the center hy minus mg minus mg this is equal to total mass times acceleration of center of mass which is this so from here you get the value of hy and hx is zero as torque is zero so tangential acceleration which is alpha into r center of mass that is also zero okay so i just told you something little bit more than what question is asking because same question will not come in the exam right so something like this comes i have seen people ignoring the centripetal acceleration as if it doesn't exist but remember it is rotational motion everywhere there will be centripetal for centripetal acceleration everything is rotating don't forget do this Kinshuk got something. Check Kinshuk whether that is right or not. Are you able to see the mess? Total mess behind my back. That's the corner we put all our uh, things which we are not using. So unfortunately, that is seeing on my background. all right many of you have answered any other answer any other answer that's it okay all right let us discuss is there a fixed axis of rotation tell me is there a fixed axis so, who is rotating the this thing is rotating right the cylinder is rotating now is there a fixed axis is there a fixed axis of the cylinder to rotate there is there is an instantaneous fixed axis of rotation but that is fine even if you are not able to visualize that's fine what did i tell you in the last session if you are not able to find out whether it is a fixed axis of rotation or not and you want to use torque equal to i alpha 
So about which axis you can use it safely? About center of mass. So it is understandable that sometimes it is tricky to understand that this is the fixed axis. All right. So let us ignore that and solve it as if there is no fixed axis. All right. So um, consider real as a hollow cylinder acceleration of the center of the real is what they're asking. So let's say this is tension T gravity force would be from here mg this is alpha okay will the center of mass accelerate or not center of mass will accelerate for the cylinder right it will have an acceleration of center of mass ac now is this a pure rolling about this point about the thread is it sort of pure rolling it's a pure rolling right and is thread is moving or thread is fixed this entire thread is fixed it is not moving at all so you can say that since pure rolling sort of scenario is happening acceleration of center is equal to alpha times r okay that's the constraint equation because of the pure rolling then you have downward direction mg minus t net force in a downward direction is mass times acceleration of center and torque about the center of mass is what t into r is there any other torque about the center of mass other than the tension torque no so t into r this is a hollow cylinder so m r square by 2 times alpha okay so one r is gone so t is equal to m ac by 2 what they are asking acceleration right so substitute the value of t over there so mg minus of m ac by 2 is equal to m times ac so 3 ac by 2 is equal to g and you don't need to now write that ac is 2g by 3 you just tick option 4 fine got it is it clear to all of you so while you are in the examination hall in fact there are some students who could write this and then directly tick the answer you don't need to write all these steps in the examination hall while practicing you should hollow cylinder moment of inertia is oh is it hollow cylinder real as a hollow cylinder yeah, yeah it is mr square i have considered it as like uh, the solid cylinder sorry about that so mr square alpha is icm okay so i think answer will change now ac would become equal to g by 2 right it will be 1 all right it will be 1 in the google it is they have considered solid cylinder i guess they have taken mr square by 2 if you search google all right so let us move forward do it your own all these questions i mean we are towards the end of the session you don't i mean you have to be very very honest brutally honest with yourself okay that is how you learn that's the most important thing do this
Okay, I can see some of you have got the answer. Some of the students are joining now. So let me put them in after this question itself. All right, many of you got some answer. Good to see that. Let us solve this question. A solid sphere of mass M and radius R is pulled by a force F. Sphere does not slip over the surface, friction force acting on the sphere. Now, this is a routine type of question, isn't it? So let us say friction is acting on it. The backward direction, the friction. F, okay. Normal reaction is uh, upward, gravity downwards, and gravity down. So I want to write torque about the center of mass is equal to I center of mass alpha. Okay. So which force is having torque? of all the forces, which of the forces have torque? F and the friction force, right? So the torque due to F and the torque due to friction force will get added up or subtracted. You get added up, both are trying to rotate in this way only. I mean, I may be wrong. The direction of friction may be wrong. But whatever I have assumed, the torque will get added up. So this is alpha A center of mass. Torque about the center of mass is F into R plus R into friction force. It's a solid sphere. So 2 by 5 MR square alpha. Then it does not slip. It is a rolling on a uh, fixed surface. So AC would be equal to R alpha. And net force F minus small f should be equal to mass times accretion of center. So we can now quickly solve it. F plus small f is equal to 2 by 5 M into A center of mass. Then you can uh, subtract it. So you'll get minus of 2F is equal to 3 by 5 M into ACM. Then you get ACM, substitute ACM, you'll get the value of F. What do you get answer as when you do all of this? So number two, Good. is the direction of force of friction correct or not? Friction, whatever we have assumed, it is coming out to be negative, right? Friction is coming out to be negative. F is equal to minus of 3 by 10 M A to AC. So that's why force of friction will be in this direction. Do this. This is another type of question which comes regularly. Someone is asking, do we ever need to be careful of choosing the direction of friction? Sometimes I have seen they ask questions that which direction the friction will be. Okay. So whichever direction the surface is trying to slide, trying to slide, opposite to that direction of friction is. But if that you are not able to visualize, solve it like a numerical quickly, you'll get the answer.
okay so what is the condition what is the condition so that it can be pulled over the step what is the condition for that to happen everyone right so torque which is trying to rotate in this way is more than the torque which is trying to rotate that way i hope this is clear to all of you and when it is about to pull over which force will become zero normal force will become zero so these are the conditions if this condition is not clear to you you will not be able to solve such questions fine all right so if that is a situation we need to draw the free body diagram and uh, this is the normal reaction passing through the center normal reaction then uh, gravity force is there any other force any other force that's it right friction from where friction will be there it has been lifted up slightly from the ground it has been lifted up from the ground okay S friction from the step oh that is something you want to consider consider it although it is not given no no it will not slip don't worry about it you can assume friction though let's say this is the friction from the step fine this is the friction now normal reaction and friction which we have considered the torque due to those two forces will be zero about this point or not this is a fixed axis of rotation so if torque about that fixed axis is just greater than zero it is like tending to zero initially what will happen is that torque due to gravity will be more than torque due to f if f is less then torque due to f kept on increasing and after some time the force of uh, this force which you are pulling becomes so big that it will topple over so when it is just starting that point in time torque due to f and torque due to mg will be equal and opposite fine so perpendicular distance of mg from this axis is given to us right no it is not given to us this distance is how much anybody calculated this is r by 2 this is r so this distance is root 3 by 2 root 3 by 2 so mg into root of 3 by 2 is a torque due to mg this should be uh, less than or equal to torque due to force perpendicular distance of this force is what from this point what is that distance r by 2 f into r by 2 okay so f should be greater than or equal to root 3 times mg so option number 3 is the clear to all of you getting the answer is not important understanding that what is the condition that is important all right let's move don't worry everything is getting recorded i'm going to share the recording also condition is normal reaction becoming zero and torque due to f is greater than torque due to gravity that is the condition do this 
sir why talk due to mg should be more initially it is more when capital f is very less you just keep the sphere and capital f is very less then it will remain there only because talk due to gravity is slightly more than the talk due to f about that point fine but it is not rotating even the talk due to gravity is more than f because normal reaction is also there right normal reaction is mg so talk due to a normal reaction and mg they will cancel out each other but when it is about to topple normal reaction disappears okay do this this is about the collisions when collision between the rigid body happens can we conserve the linear momentum yes or no like the way we are we do with the point masses can we conserve the linear momentum for the rigid body also yes but we have to take the velocity of center of mass about the what do you mean conservation of linear momentum about the point linear momentum conservation is not about the point it is about the direction i am not talking about angular momentum do this everyone this question all of you first one is solid sphere and second one is identical sphere so second one become solid or not all right so shall we solve this shall we solve this 20 seconds okay i can see many of you giving the answers oh i have to take the attendance also i'll just quickly take the attendance take couple of seconds more all right so let us solve this um ha huh. so can i conserve the linear momentum just before and after collision type in yes or no but there is a friction right there is friction it's a rough surface so 
तो कैन आई कंजर्व लीनियर मोमेंटम देर इज एक्सटर्नल फोर्स ऑरिजेंटली कैन आई कंजर्व दीनियर मोमेंटम नाउ टेल मी फर्स्ट स्पीयर इज प्योर रोलिंग सो वॉट फ्रिक्शन विल बी देयर और नॉट फ्रिक्शन इज देयर सो कैन यू कंजर्व दीनियर मोमेंटम okay someone is saying it does not do any work that is immaterial whether it does work or not this what is a you are creating rules in your head things are pretty simple if external force is there you can't conserve momentum is it written anywhere that it has to do the work then only you can't conserve the momentum no 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 you are creating rules so clear that clear it from your head all those things are not valid but yes you can conserve momentum you can conserve momentum even though there is external force the reason for that is that it is not impulsive it is non impulsive force so just before and after immediately before and after you can conserve momentum if you leave it for very long you can't conserve momentum let's say 5 hours before and 2 hours after the collision the friction will change the velocity and angular velocity okay so yes you can conserve the angular momentum because it is non impulsive and if you do not know what is impulsive non impulsive get in touch with me after the class i will send you a video i can't teach you what is impulsive what is non impulsive in this session okay otherwise half an hour or 45 minutes will be gone there itself isn't it impulsive on the second sphere no it is not impulsive on the second sphere the force of collision is this way right the first sphere comes and hits the other sphere this way so this is the normal reaction between these two so why friction has to be impulsive the force of collision is horizontal friction friction at max will be mu times this normal reaction will this normal reaction change due to the collision or it remains mg normal reaction from the ground remains mg or not stays mg right so friction doesn't change during the collision all right so just before and after you can conserve the linear momentum they are uh, the this thing identical elastic collision happens head on collision happens so can i say that the first one comes to rest and second one starts moving with the same velocity can i say that everyone right they exchange velocities in the elastic collision so the second one is moving with velocity of v not okay v not velocity and the uh, okay coefficient of friction is given plus your second wave when it starts pure rolling no it is not given to us what will be omega of the second one initial omega immediately after collision is there a, is there an impulsive torque about the center no impulsive force is there but torque due to that is zero okay so the initial angular velocity is zero but friction will be there right what kind of friction will be there kinetic or static initially kinetic right it will be kinetic sliding is happening omega is not there it will be this way whatever it is anyway coefficient of friction is not given to us so let's say friction is f the best thing about the kinetic friction is it remain constant so if it is a sliding happening the deceleration will be constant so you can use equations of motion uh okay okay someone is asking didn't the first sphere already have angular velocity how is initial omega zero yeah first one has angular velocity right first one has it but why second one will have 
why second one will have you tell me that is there any torque due to the collision about the center of mass for second sphere to have omega you need impulse torque impulse torque is not there friction between two sphere is zero it is smooth clearly written read the question okay anyways so the acceleration of the sphere of mass m is uh, f by m and it is the deceleration in backward direction this is a deceleration so the velocity after time t is v not minus f by m into t and omega angular velocity will be there because there is alpha omega is omega not which is zero plus alpha into t okay now how will you find omega sorry alpha how will you find friction is creating torque f into r is equal to 2 by 5 m r square alpha okay so alpha is 5 f by 2 mr this alpha you have to use here and if pure rolling starts then v should be equal to omega r and this will give you time t when the uh, pure rolling will start and once you get the value of t substitute it here you'll get the value of velocity okay what do you get the answer as here everyone what do you get answer here as good so just do this calculation and find out okay someone is saying we can conserve angular momentum yes there are some textbook and in the google also people have conserved the angular momentum to find out the answer but for that you need to understand the principle of instantaneous axis of rotation so there is a fixed axis of rotation actually about this point net torque is zero so you can conserve the angular momentum initially and finally you can get the answer like that also okay but then if you have not done it till now i would say avoid it when you look at the solution somewhere they will they do talk about the other method also but this is the regular one which you can apply anywhere so i am talking about a generic method understood siddharth okay someone is asking what happens to the first sphere who cares about the first sphere first sphere stops good arjun is saying first sphere linear velocity becomes zero what about the angular velocity what about its angular velocity angular velocity remains unchanged non zero it will be that only or not it'll remain that only whatever it was earlier okay so if there is this sphere linear velocity becomes zero and it has the angular velocity omega so what will happen this point is trying to go back so friction is acting this way fine so now after some time even this will start pure rolling omega will decrease linear velocity will increase and then pure rolling will start after some time even for the second one also clear to everyone okay good that you are asking intelligent questions like that only we should probe all the situations our motive here is not to get the answer for one question what is our motive to get the clarity of the situation because the same thing can come in a different manner in the exam same question will not come exactly do this this is on linear impulse and angular impulse
Okay, some of you got the answer already. Any other answer? Linear impulse is equal to what? What is the impulse equation? Linear impulse equals to hmm. linear impulse is change in the momentum. Okay. So linear impulse to the system is M into V. It is a linear impulse. And uh, two identical balls connected by light rod. Rod is massless. This is going to change in momentum. So 2m into velocity of center of mass minus 0. So velocity of center of mass is v by so v by 2. It comes directly like this. Then, um, but nobody is interested in finding velocity of center of mass. What they're asking is, angular velocity. This impulse also creates an angular impulse. This linear impulse has an angular impulse about the center of mass. So I can write the angular impulse, which is linear impulse multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the center. This is the angular impulse. This is equal to change in the angular momentum about the center of mass. Change in the angular momentum about the center of mass is ICM, final angular velocity minus initial angular velocity. Initial one is zero. ICM is M into L by two, whole square. There are two masses, so into two, omega F, omega I is zero. So what do you get omega F as from here? Option one, so this is how you do this. You cannot conserve the energy here. How can you conserve energy? Clear to all of you? Type in. All right. Can we, somebody asking, can we consider second mass as an instantaneous center of rotation? I'm not using instantaneous axis of rotation to solve any of the questions as of now, because it is not required for J main at least. Fine. You can solve it without that. Someone is asking in these situations, it is not absolutely necessary to do anything about center of mass. Even if suppose we wrote angular momentum about the left mass, does it still works? Are you telling me or asking me? Are you telling me or asking? See the angular momentum. No, 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 Siddhar. That's incorrect. Totally incorrect. See, torque is equal to I alpha. This equation is valid about the center of mass or about the fixed axis. Similarly, the angular impulse, the angular impulse is equal to change in the angular momentum. This is also valid about the center of mass or about the fixed axis. In this question, this point happened to be, sorry, not that point. The other point, this point happened to be instantaneous axis of rotation. So that is why doing it like that, you are getting answer in this question. But if suppose this doesn't turn out to be instantaneous axis of rotation, then whatever you did will give you the wrong answer. Fine. So always use this equation, angular impulse equation, either about the fixed axis or about the center of mass axis. If it is not clear, where is the fixed axis? 
use it about the center of mass axis don't create rules in your head clear said that okay so whenever you have such misconceptions or you know like something which you are not very clear voice is out i mean it is good that you are asking such questions many times we have something in our head we want to use it again and again just clarify it once it doesn't don't you don't need to shy away asking such things okay good that you ask solve this question I think VCM you can get easily. Can you tell me what is the loss of center of mass? Zero. Okay. All right. It will be zero. So it is between two and three. Conservation of linear momentum. Initial linear momentum. 2m into v minus m into v this is equal to 0 that should be equal to 2m 3m 8m that is 11m into vc so velocity of center of mass is 0 okay people are getting different answers Two particles mass m and 2m strike the rod and stick to the rod after collision, the velocity of center of mass and the angular velocity about the center of mass. See, when they say angular velocity about the center of mass, it doesn't mean anything. They should have just said, what is the angular velocity? They don't need to write that. Angular velocity is same about any point. So, let's say angular velocity is this final angular velocity so can i conserve the angular momentum tell me can i conserve the angular momentum people are saying yes but then when the when these uh, particles are moving and hitting the rod they will apply force on the rod right that will create external torque that will create the torque yes or no so how can you apply the conservation of the angular momentum? They are the internal forces because, because your system is all of it together. Okay. So 
about which axis can i apply conservation of angular momentum about which axis i am asking about which axis i can apply i may or may not apply that axis only about center of mass only about center of mass or about any axis let's say i am applying about this axis is external torque is there about that axis no right about any axis but when i'm uh, using about any axis then it is difficult to write the uh, this thing difficult to write the angular momentum equation about any axis if i am using the center of mass it is simply i into omega is the formula otherwise the angular momentum expression becomes little lengthy and complex so that is the reason why even though i can write about any axis but i am using center of mass axis to write the uh, conservation of angular momentum conservation of angular momentum about the center of the rod okay so let us do that um initial angular momentum is what m into 2v into 2a now angular momentum of m and 2m will get added up or subtracted it'll get added up plus 2m into v into a this is the initial angular momentum this should be equal to the final angular momentum okay so the how will you write the angular momentum of the rod and uh, the okay here when it gets stick over it the problem is center of mass location changes the center of rod no longer remains the center of mass so we have to be very careful okay so what you can do is that after the collision you write the angular momentum of all of it separately for example this mass see vcm is zero this mass is moving with omega into 2a velocity that mass is moving with whatever is angular velocity into a right okay the center of mass remains same is it it is 2m is at a distance of a and m is at a distance of 2a center of mass remains same but then suppose it is not same suppose the center of mass doesn't remain same then what you have to do is this m into velocity after the collision into 2a plus 2m into velocity after the collision into a plus icm which is 8m how much a distance 2a 2a 4 5 6 8m 6a square by 12 times omega is it clear to all of you this equation how i wrote the angular momentum of three things separately mass into its velocity after the collision into perpendicular distance mass into its velocity after the collision into perpendicular distance and then for the rod separately you could have written because center of mass remains unchanged you could have written 2m into a square plus m into 2a square plus 8m 6a square by 12 times omega that exactly what it comes if you take omega common in these three expression clear to all of you type in okay someone is asking even if center of mass changes what is the issue in writing uh, the angular momentum like this see angular momentum about the fixed axis is if into omega 
angular momentum about the center of mass is i cm into omega and angular momentum about any other point other than the center of mass and the fixed axis is r perpendicular into m into v cm plus i cm omega so then you have to use this expression and you don't want to use this you want to keep things simple isn't it that is why i mean uh, i have taken it separately but it turns out luckily in this question the center of mass doesn't change do this you can use impulse equation anywhere impulse equation is more generic than the torque equation more generic than the uh, conservation of angular momentum you can use it anywhere it is in a crude manner the most basic thing is impulse because of impulse only everything is happening if you are comfortable with the impulse equation do this find out the final answer siddhant how does it matter equations are written find it out what is the previous answer by the way anybody found out v by 6a those who want to write it v by 6a was the angular velocity okay aditya is getting something else so that that's what i'm telling you solve it your own okay solve this question your own now all of you you are not create you are not uh, here to create notes this is not a session where you are creating notes for yourself all right so i have written equation that's it you should be able to do it now Okay, Ritu and Shitesh got two different answers. What will the final velocity? immediately after collision their velocity will become what when it comes to rest zero <laughs> no 
total momentum will be zero velocity will be exchanged now left sphere will go in the left uh, left sphere which is going on the right hand side will go on the left and right sphere which is going on the left hand side will move on the right okay Velocities will get exchanged. V not, V not. Okay, but what about the angular velocity? Will angular velocity change the direction? Yes or no? Angular velocity will remain like this only. Okay, angular velocity will be like this. Angular velocity will be like okay, fine. I was going this way. Suddenly, what happened? So this. Is the angular velocity? What is the value of angular velocity? V not by r only, right? And because of the symmetry of situation, whatever happens to the one sphere, same thing happens to the other sphere also. Okay. Direction of friction on the bottom most point is what? Which direction it is? You can clearly tell because the bottom most point. Is going on the left hand side, so friction is this way. So acceleration is F by m. Same thing you have to do here, um, but you have to take care of the directions. All right. So v velocity is v naught minus F by m into t. This is the velocity v and Uh, the torque, friction into R, is equal to two by five m r square alpha. So alpha is five f by two m r. So omega is equal to omega naught. now alpha is opposite to the omega or not angular acceleration is opposite direction or in the same direction as omega it is opposite so minus will come minus of alpha t omega not plus alpha t now how will you relate v and omega tell me when pure rolling starts after a long time how will you relate everyone no can the direction of omega and direction of velocity will remain like this even if pure rolling starts or it will reversed it will be reverse right here which direction you are considering positive for angular velocity which direction you are considering positive clockwise anti clockwise clockwise here left hand side right suppose the sphere starts pure rolling on moving on the left hand side so this is what will happen the omega will reverse finally or not direction of omega should change if it has to do pure rolling so that is why v should be equal to minus of omega into r clear to all of you okay do this get the value of t and uh, then you substitute here to get the answer for the v can anyone get it quickly solve it quick and tell me what is the answer you are getting
3 v naught by 7. Correct. This is what everyone is getting. I hope it is clear to all of you. Type in, everyone. All right. F will be mu times normal reaction till the pure rolling starts. Yes. As soon as pure rolling starts, friction is not mu time normal reaction. Someone is asking why did they mention after a sufficiently long time? Was it to consider after time t? After the, after time t after collision, then get it. Basically, once the pure rolling starts, they want that situation. Okay, because pure rolling will be happening for some time at least. Okay. They they should have written clearly though, but I just guessed it. Do this. Read the question and first tell me the condition for that to happen. Okay. Others, what is the condition? The condition is that if the structure rotates, then opposite direction, the torque generates. Have you observed like, uh, how many of you are have taken ride on a boat, not the ship, boat, smaller boats, right? Have you observed that the boat uh, shakes like this whenever it moves forward? It, it's not that the boat doesn't oscillate, boat moves, but then still it doesn't topple over ever. Even the bigger boats also where 10 to 12 people are there, uh, Sometimes the boat has a uh, ground floor and the first floor also. Even there also, however much the oscillation happens, more and more like say uh, the, the water is moving, then also the boat doesn't topple over. The reason is that if the boat rotates like this, then a torque gets developed in the opposite direction. So immediately when it goes this way, quickly it comes like that because of the opposing torque. So it tries to uh, bring it to that position. Now, why it happens, let us quickly do that here. See, uh, suppose this rotates a little bit. I may not be draw the perfect figure here. Suppose it rotates this way. Okay.
This is the center of the sphere. This is the ground. Okay. So the normal reaction from the ground, will it pass through the center of the sphere or not? Everyone, will it pass through the center of the sphere or not? Everyone. Right. This is the point. The ground is a tangent. Ground is tangent to the hemisphere. So the normal will pass through the center. All of you type in, is this clear? Right. Now, if center of mass is here, if center of mass is here, then the gravity force will act like that. So will it rotate more this way or it will go back? What do you think will happen? More it will rotate. So this is unstable. This is unstable. Okay. But if center of mass is somewhere here, let's say assume it to be there. Then tell me what happens about this point. Will it try to go back or it will rotate more? It will try to go back. Right. So this is. This is a very important criteria of designing boats. Fine. The buoyancy force is there. The gravity force is there. So like that, they design it. All right. Here, um, maximum value of L so that it remains in equilibrium. So if the center of mass comes over here, then the gravity force will act here only. At max, you can have it over there for stable equilibrium, right? At max, your center of mass can be on this line. It should not be on the right hand side of the line. Getting it. So let us assume that center of mass is at the center of this hemisphere over there, not center of the hemisphere, center of the sphere for which the hemisphere is a part of. Okay. So that is the condition center of mass lying over there for both the structure. Okay. Can you tell me location of center of mass for hemisphere? What it is? We derived it. This essence is what? For hemisphere. 3 R by 8 or R by 2? Two different answers people are giving. R by 2? Three R by eight. Okay, two people have said three R by eight. It's a shell. Okay. Shell is R by two. Solid hemisphere is three R by eight. Now do it. Get the answer.
Archet got something, others. Center of mass of entire structure should lie here. See, because of the symmetry of the problem, center of mass must lie on this line. Right? So the only thing when it rotates, what will happen is that the normal will go like this. Whenever is a normal, it will always go through the center. So if center of mass has to be on this line only and make sure that it doesn't become unstable. It has to be here at least. All right. So, uh, maximum value of L so that it remains in stable equilibrium. Mass of the hemisphere is proportional to the surface area. So sigma into 2 pi r square. The mass of this cylinder, it, that is also hollow, right? Yeah. Sigma into 2 pi r L. So let us say my y axis is this x axis is that. So y center of mass, which is r should be equal to sigma 2 pi r square. This is m1. From here to there, the center of mass distance is r by 2 plus sigma 2 pi r l. Center of mass is here, which is r plus l by 2. Anybody did like this? What do you get answer as? Okay, another like I have not used that. Simpler way is taking O as the center of the axis. That would have been a lot simpler, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah, correct. If the center of the coordinate axis is this, then zero should be equal to sigma 2 pi r square into minus of r by 2 plus sigma 2 pi r l into l by 2 right this will be simpler uh, you're getting option 2 right okay do this Suppose we don't get enough time to do gravitation, then we can do a little bit of it next class as well. But I think we will get time.
Okay, anyone? Fine, so let us do this. Shall we do it now? Hmm. A uniform mass M radius R, point mass M circumference, rolling without slipping, station of point O, normal reaction, the disk, we have to find out. So free body diagram, nothing else. Normal reaction up, mg down, and let's say friction is backwards, fr. No other force. Is center of mass accelerating vertical direction? Alpha is A naught by R or not? It is pure rolling. Where is center of mass, by the way? Where is center of mass? Center of mass is here in the middle, r by 2 distance away, right? So all of you, do you agree that it will have a tangential acceleration in downward direction? which is alpha into R by two. And this way, the acceleration is A naught. Do you all agree? Type in. So vertical direction, if you write down the forces, Mg minus normal reaction is equal to not Mg, 2Mg. There is mg from here also, point mass mg also, this, okay? So 2mg down minus normal reaction. I'm just looking at forces. I'm not looking from where it is applied. Vertical direction, 2mg minus n is the force. Uh, that should be equal to two times m into alpha into r by two, okay? So 2mg, minus normal reaction should be equal to 2m. Alpha is A naught by R. A naught by 2. 2 and 2 is gone. So normal reaction is 2mg minus m into A naught. So it is less than 2mg. Clear to all of you? Type in. Everyone. We will come back to these questions if time permits later on. But anyways, solve this one at least one numeric type.
सिंपल क्वेश्चन मेनी ऑफ यू गॉट द आंसर ऑलरेडी अदर्स एनी अदर आंसर All right. Um. Okay. See, these are the kind of question you should never get it wrong in the exam. So never hurry up. I can see that some of you are getting the wrong answer, and when you read the question, it appears that it's a very simple and straightforward question, right? Don't get it wrong for your own sake. Moment of inertia of the uniform semi-circular wire about an axis passing through its center of mass perpendicular to the plane. This is the. Uh, if let's say a semi circular wire is of mass m circular wire will be of what mass 2m so moment of inertia would be 2m r square for full circle and for half of it will be half of that so for this moment of inertia is m r square but that is the moment of inertia about this axis what they are asking is moment of inertia uh, passing through the center of mass this moment of inertia they want do you know what is this distance center of mass to this point's distance is what 2 r by pi that is 2 r by pi so according to the parallel axis theorem icm plus m into d square is equal to i so icm plus m into 2r by pi whole square this is equal to mr square actually which you have got okay so anybody did like this one minus 4 by Ten is uh, okay. Ten is in the denominator, so six by ten. So x is six. I hope this is clear to everyone. Archit understood. Aryan clear. okay someone is asking sir can we find the moment of inertia of any axis through the center of the semi ring in the same way i didn't get what are you asking i'll unmute you speak uh, sir uh can we find the moment of inertia through uh, the semicircular ring through any such axis it doesn't need to be any symmetric axis but through any such axis what such axis means what um like any moment of inertia about the of the full circle and when you remove half of it symmetrically moment of inertia becomes half but then you realize that that is not the center of mass center of mass has shifted down so you use that only uh, yes sir but can we do it if that axis of uh, that we are considering it was any axis that let's say it was on the plane of the ring at some angle here uh no there here no, and passing through the centers so it's it's on the plane the axis is on the plane but it passes through the center 
ओह ओके हा दैट सपोज यू नो द फॉर फुल सर्कल मोमेंट ऑफ अबाउट दैट एक्सेस इज एम आर स्क्वायर बाई टू सो फॉर हाफ ऑफ इट विल बी हाफ सेम थिंग कैन डू यस कैन डू दैट वे ओके सीरियस वाई नॉट यू शुड आस्क वाई नॉट right is there any flaw in this solution like that you should critically analyze okay but then yes you can do it all right let's move ahead mm. how many questions we have here never ending anyways we know that rigid boy dynamics is never ending chapter this looks interesting so we will solve this question before starting the gravitation okay do this whatever it is like if we are getting centimeter per, just tell me the speed forget about what is the value of x tell me the speed directly with the units don't worry about the uh, this thing but they should have specified speed is in centimeter per second or meter per second okay siddharth got it shitej got it anything or anybody else
Okay, nobody else. Is it lengthy? All right, so let us do it. The speed of the block when it descended by two centimeter. Spring was unstretched. So I hope all of you understand we will be using conservation of mechanical energy here. This is two centimeter it has descended. U2 plus K2 is equal to U1 plus K1. Now put, potential energy, we have two types. One is gravitation potential energy, other one is spring potential energy. You have to take both. So let's say the initial gravitation potential energy. Hold on, Weber. Hold on. Initial gravitation potential energy about this red line is let's say zero. That is our reference line. So U2 is minus of 10. G is also 10, let's say, MGH 0 0.02. This is the final gravitation potential energy plus how much spring will be extended? Will it be the same thing? Right? So 0 0.02 whole square. So this is the final potential energy. Final potential energy is this. Now, if rather than getting extended, if a spring get compressed, then potential energy remain this only or it will change? It will remain same. It does not matter whether spring is compressed or extended. Potential energy is half kx square only. This is a final potential energy plus kinetic energy. Half 10 into velocity square plus half i omega square for this. What is that? Cylinder, right? Whatever it is. We are assuming it is rotating. Half i omega square. Omega is u by r. u by 0 0.1 whole square. Right? So this is u2, this is k2. This is equal to u1, which is 0 plus K1, which is zero. So those who got the answer, have you done it like this? No, okay, get the answer now, quick. What are you getting? I think some of you might have ignored. Can I guess, Shitej, what kind of silly error you did? You ignored kinetic energy of this cylinder, right? No. Then what you... I ignored work from the tension. Tension is internal force. And I mean, Tension won't do the work actually. Whatever work tension does here, it gets cancelled over there. Weber is asking, why does pulley rotate when there is no net torque? Who says there is no net torque? First of all, it should be written actually. It, it is not written the question. It should be written clearly that the cylinder at top rotates without, or at least should be written that the rope doesn't slip over the cylinder. That should be written. Okay. It rotates because the tension on both sides, they are different. They are not same. T1 and T2 are not same. So there is a torque. What do you get answer here as? Everyone. U is what? 3 by 10 meter per second. Correct. Okay, so let us start the gravitation now. Let us start the gravitation now, everyone.
All right. So in gravitation, what all things are there? In gravitation, we have we have the uh, first is universal law of gravitation, which tells us the force between the two point masses. Okay. Then we have Kepler laws, three Kepler laws. You remember that or not? Law of areas, law of periods, and uh, and what else? Law of areas, law of periods, and law of orbits. Okay. But we ignore law of orbits. In this chapter, at least for J main, we ignore the fact that the uh, satellites or planets are moving in an elliptical path. We say it is a circular, roughly. Okay, so we are studying a circular motion. Fine. Now, gravitation we have already accounted for till now. In work by energy, we had gravitational force and we have the gravitational potential energy, all that we had. But in this chapter, we are studying the gravitational force again and gravitation potential energy again because when I say gravitational force is mg, there are two things. First, I'm assuming only Earth is applying gravity force, which is wrong. Even this bottle is applying gravity force on this object. Even these two have gravitational force. So I'm ignoring that. I'm only assuming that Earth is applying gravity force. Second thing which I was assuming was that Earth is flat, which is a reasonable assumption if you are near to the surface of the Earth. But as soon as you go very far away, or let's say you're taking uh, the gravitational force between moon and the earth, you can't assume earth to be flat. Third thing was, we assume that attraction due to gravity is constant throughout. All of these assumptions goes for a toss if we talk about the larger distances. So that is why there's a separate chapter. In fact, this chapter is so big that people spend their entire lifetime studying only gravitation. Einstein was one of them. Okay, then uh, what was what that other person named the string theory? Stephen Hawkins, he also did only the gravity study. So gravity is the fundamental force. And if you understand gravity, people say that you have understood the entire universe also in a way. But anyways, our task is to get the marks in this chapter. So, even though the universal law of gravitation f is equal to g m1 m2 by r square is there with us but then this is rendered useless if we talk about the force between a point mass and let's say a rod okay what do you take r as sorry what do you take r as r is this distance this distance that distance what do you take you can't take any of them because the gravitational law is valid only for the point masses. So you define something called as gravitational field, which is force per unit mass, which is uh, gm by r square. This is gravitational field for a point mass. So what you do, you find out the gravitational field of this entire rod at this point, and then multiply by the mass, to get the force between rod and the point mass. So that is the idea. Okay. So that is why gravitational field is defined. Now, gravitational field due to a ring, that is something which comes quite often. So let's say there is a ring. How much is the gravitational field at the center? Everyone. Gravitational field is a vector quantity, like all of you know, right? It is zero. At the center, it is zero because the force per unit mass at the center is zero. If you tensor this mass, this point mass, it will apply force this way. This one like that. So like that, force per unit mass get cancelled away in all directions. But if you take like this, this kind of scenario along the axis, if you have to find out the gravitational field, mass m radius r over here, which direction the gravitational field will be? Can you tell me? It's like this, like that. 
okay circle is on my palm and this is the axis about the natural axis basically along this natural axis only this way how much it is if that distance is a quickly find out what it is Let me know once you're done. Okay. See, in case, I mean, I can understand there might be some things which you are seeing for the first time. Okay. You should also understand that I cannot stop everyone and start teaching a concept. This is not a class where I'm teaching a concept, fine? So if you are seeing something for the first time, you have to learn that concept, okay? To learn that concept, you have to watch the entire classroom recording. For that, you get in touch with me. I will share all the recordings with you, whatever is your requirement. Let's say this angle is theta. So if you consider a point mass over here, dm mass, let's say, this DM will have a gravitational field this way. Okay. That's a gravitational field. Now, you know, since you have learned the electrostatics, so when you learn gravitational field in grade 11 and after learning electric field, like you can correlate very well, right? The whatever is happening in the gravitation, same thing happens in the electrostatics also. Electric field is like gravitational field, exact same thing. D E is uh, G D M divided by that distance square. That distance square is A square plus R square. Okay, this is D E. Now, if you consider a point mass over here, that will also have the field this way. And if you see the symmetrically, symmetry here, along this direction, the field will get canceled away. Anytime you take one point mass, let's say if you take it here, diametrically opposite, there will be one more point. Okay, so they will cancel out perpendicular to the axis. So only field remains is the horizontal. So why to consider vertical component? We'll just consider the horizontal one, which is G dm a square by r square into cos of theta cos of theta is a divided by root over a square plus r square. Now, since all the components are in along the same direction, you can integrate them. Integral of dm becomes m. So the field is g a m gam a square plus r square raised to power three by two. This is what you get. So now if you put the point mass over here of mass M, the force between ring and this point mass M would be this field multiplied by this M. Okay. So I, I just did that derivation actually. I should not have done the derivation, just directly written the expression. Variation in value of G. G is nothing but force per unit mass. Just look at the name. It is acceleration due to gravity. So it is like if only gravity force is acting, what would be the acceleration? If only gravity force is acting, net force is gravity force. So acceleration will be force divided by mass. So that is how you find out G. On the surface, it is GM by radius of the planet square. When you go above, let's say from center, if you are... Uh, at a certain distance of h from the surface. So re plus h whole square is g. Now in our textbook, they have given us some approximation, right? Approximately g is this uh, 1 minus gm by re square. What is that? You take re 2h by re. 
right? Do you remember this? So this is G naught one minus two H by R E. Don't use this. This is an approximation. In numericals, never use it. It assumes that H is very less compared to R E. Use this if you are at a height H from the surface. Okay, when you are going down below, then your G will vary like this: one minus d by r e. This is not approximation. Height variation is the approximation. So, and you know, G can change with the rotation of Earth also. Even that, sometime you have to take into account. For example, here, get the answer. we have to take a break after this question we'll take Done? Anyone? Okay, I can see some of you got the answer. This is our Mother Earth. About the pole the earth rotates. So let's say earth rotates like this. You're here. Okay. So, you know, you will realize that there is a pseudo force due to rotation that is acting on you, which is M omega square into radius of the earth. So this is also due to earth only, right? This is due to earth only. So, the total force is not just gravity force. Gravity force minus this force is a total force. So due to Earth, the total force is mg minus m omega square re. This should be equal to mass times g effective at the equator. So g effective should become zero, which is g minus omega square re. So omega is root of G by RE. This is omega. Okay. Now you can find out the length of the day. So time period would be 2 pi by omega. So 2 pi RE by G. This many seconds. Okay. So I think I have done some calculation couple of years before. And the time of rotation comes out to be about one hour something. So if Earth completes one day in one hour, then this will happen. Okay, now potential energy. You know, uh, the potential energy between the two point masses is minus of G. I mean, you, you don't, don't read it right now. Whatever I'm writing, focus there. G M1, M2 by R between the two point masses. 
So till now, whenever we wrote gravitational potential energy, again, I'm repeating, we only considered that the potential energy between earth and some other object. We ignored the potential energy between the two objects. So now we are considering potential energy can be between any two masses. So between any two point masses, this is the potential energy minus of G M1 M2 by R. Don't write MGH in this chapter. So, but why minus here? Earlier it was uh, plus MGH because it was plus MGH because you assumed something as zero and you are comparing potential energy because of that. Now what you're doing is you're assuming zero potential energy when the distance between the two masses is infinite. So when distance is infinite, potential energy is maximum, which is zero. So all other potential energy will be less than zero. So that is why negative. And yes, you can use work energy theorem here also. Don't hesitate to do that. Conservation of momentum, conservation of angular momentum, con the torque equation, whatever we have learned, everything you can use. Wherever it is required, you can use anything, whatever we have learned. Just that potential energy, you should be careful. You should not write MGH because MGH is an approximation for gravitational potential energy. Now, many a times, uh, many a times, you know, we are not dealing with point masses. I mean, most of the time, actually, we are not dealing with the point masses. We are dealing with the bigger masses. But the formula for the potential energy is for the point masses. Right. So we need to define just like we define the gravitational field for the bigger masses, which is force per unit mass. We define gravitation potential, which is potential energy per unit mass. So if you tell me that potential gravitation potential of this object over here is V, then if I put a mass over there, potential energy between mass and this object would be M into V like that. Okay, so potential for a point mass is minus of G M by R. Okay, Ajay, by the way, I keep on saying point mass, even for a uh, uniform spherical shell. Outside the shell, the spherical shell behave like a point mass located at the center. Okay, so whatever we had, uh, we are writing for the point mass is valid for the sphere also outside the sphere. So, for example, for a ring of mass m radius r at this distance, potential would be what? It's a scalar quantity, just like electrostatic potential it is. Scalar quantity, so you can see that all the masses are at some fixed distance. This is a under root of r square plus a square is a distance. So potential is minus of g m divided by root over. Are you able to relate whatever you have learned earlier? Type in. Are you able to recollect from your memories, sweet memories of gravitation? You're able to remember that. Type in. Okay. If those sweet memories are not coming to you, make sure you revise the gravitation. Okay. Gravitation is a very simple chapter in grade 11. You should, I mean, you can, you can ignore the difficult topics, but you can never ignore the simpler topics. If you combine 11th and 12th, I can tell you 60 to 70% of physics is straightforward. But the biggest mistake students do is that they spend 70% of time doing 30% of the stuff. And 70% of the syllabus, which is so simple, they don't spend much time over there. So you need to score marks, right? So focus on the simpler thing first. Master it and then go to the difficult ones. Can relate with electrostatics. Yes, you can do that also. Okay. The only one difference is that in electrostatics, forces can be attractive and repulsive both. But in gravitation, everything is attractive. 
this we just did. Look at this. We have done all of these derivations. You remember this? We haven't done the cone actually, but we did all of it. Remember or not? Okay, I can see very few are saying yes. If you don't remember, then what we can do? <laughs> what I can do? It is you who have to re revise. I can't revise on your behalf, isn't it? So spend some time. Now I can tell you this is where the pe this is where the people who are less prepared will make mistake. This solid sphere. Solid sphere, if there is a solid sphere inside at a distance small r from the center, the potential is if you remember it and if it comes, others will get it wrong and you will get it right. Inside it is this. Okay. So when r is equal to zero, the potential of the solid sphere at the center is minus of 3 gm by 2r. This is where most of the students will make mistake. And here also, I know that I'm telling you this, 60 students are there. Out of 60, only uh, you know 10 to 15 of you are focusing right now. And when it comes to the exam, you'll again say that, okay, at the center potential is zero or something else. Okay, someone is asking why field is infinite due to the cone. It comes out like that, you know, if, uh, if there is a point charge, if you try to define field on the point charge itself, it is not defined actually. Infinite is a wrong word, not defined. Okay, do this. forgot to take break again do this after this we'll take two three minutes break Okay, so many of you getting the answer here. Ring mass M radius R is placed on the YZ plane, the center at the origin. Just do that. Axis is on the x-axis. 
पार्टिकल इज रिलीज फ्रॉम हियर x इक्वल टू टू आर स्पीड वेन इट रीच इज द सेंटर इज मास एम रेडियस आर ओके वट इज द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट कम्स इन योर माइंड वट यू टू डू वर्क एज यू थेरम एंड इन दिस चैप्टर मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम एक्सटर्नल फोर्स इज एबसेंट ओके लाइक देर इज अर्थ देर इज मून और स्टार्स और सेटेलाइट आर देयर इट विल नेवर बी दैट देर इज एन एक्सटर्नल फोर्स विच इज पुलिंग द अर्थ टूवर्ड्स दिस थिंग सो वर्क डन इज मोस्ट ऑफ टाइम जीरो so that is the reason why you can directly write u2 plus k2 is equal to u1 plus k1 in this chapter specifically but not always i mean i'm saying 99.9% this will happen so finite potential energy when the object reaches here is mass into potential over there kinetic energy half m into can you tell me what is the assumption here while i'm writing the equation this that is equal to m into v1 plus 0 what is the assumption correct the assumption is that the ring is fixed it should be specified here okay ring is not moving if you allow ring also to move then what you have to do to solve the problem conservation of linear momentum and energy you have to conserve the linear momentum then let's say final velocity of this and that is v1 and v2 so m into v1 minus capital m into v2 is equal to 0 this is one more equation that comes but we are ignoring actually okay keeping simple so potential of the ring at the center is g capital m divided by r no minus actually minus plus half m into u square this is equal to mass potential over there if to consider that distance this distance is how much r and 2r root 5 so minus of gm by root 5 r plus 0 this is the equation all of you understand this type in okay let's take a small break because maybe you need one let's meet after 5 minutes
All right. Am I audible? Fine. So let us move. This is the motion of planets and satellite. Like I told you, we will be, we are assuming that the planets and satellites, they are moving in a circular path. And if anything moves in a circular path, the first thing, the first equation that you should write is that the force towards the center, which usually is the gravitational force, is equal to m v square by r. This is the first thing that you should write. This equation. And as a result of this, what comes out this. This is what I was writing here. Okay. Kinetic energy is this and total energy is this. Have you seen this in modern physics? When electron revolves around the nucleus, something similar happens. Have you seen it? Right? Very similar to that. So again, I'll write here that the potential energy is minus of G M M by R kinetic energy is G M M by two R. The total energy of the planet kinetic energy plus potential energy, which is minus of G M M by two R. So this is minus actually here. Total energy is negative. It means that it is favorable for them to remain like that. If they separate, their total energy will become zero, which is more than whatever is the energy as of now. So that is why they don't leave each other. Now, these things uh, for geostationary satellites, these satellites, they are relatively at rest when you are seeing from the earth their orbit must be circular they should rotate same way the earth is rotating it should be along the equatorial plane the rotation if earth is rotating about this axis so the satellite should also rotate like this only it can't rotate like this okay Time period must be 24 hours. It should rotate west to east, just like Earth is rotating. Let me find some objective questions here. Okay, escape velocity is just like a made up concept here. What is escape velocity? It is the minimum velocity by which we throw so that the object doesn't come back. Doesn't come back as in it goes to infinity. So initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy should be equal to the final potential energy which is zero. And since it is minimum velocity, the final kinetic energy also will equate that to zero. And escape velocity comes out to be this. Okay. Radius of the planet is R. We know that G is equal to capital G mass of earth divided by R square. So the escape velocity comes out to be under root of 2G R E. Fine. Now, does it matter in which direction you're throwing the object? This is the earth. Does it matter whether you're throwing it upwards in this direction like that? Or you can throw any direction. Escape velocity will be this only. Everyone, does it matter in which direction you're throwing? It does not matter. Okay. 
doesn't matter ultimately the object reaches infinity and the earth becomes like a point mass when it goes very very far kepler's law we already discussed solve these questions Okay, Shittej and Aditya got something. Others? Siddharth got something. Hmm. All right. So we have infinite masses. Each of mass three kg plays at one, two, four, eight marks. Acceleration of two kg at the origin will be what? What we will do? We'll find out the gravitational field. Due to all of them. Okay. It will be equal to minus of G 3 kg divided by 1 square plus G 3 kg divided by 2 square, G 3 kg divided by 4 square. And so on. Right. So this will be 3G one by one square plus one by two square. What does this becomes? This is two raised to power four. This is two raised to power six. And so on. This you can say 2 raised to power 0. It is a GP, infinite GP. So you can add it up. This is A divided by 1 minus R. This is your field. So the force is, this is how much field, how much it comes out? This is uh, 4, 4G. Field is 4G. And uh, field into mass, this is the force, 2 into 4G is the force, this is equal to mass times acceleration, so acceleration is 4G only. Field is the acceleration because field is what? Force per unit mass, which is acceleration also, if that is the only force acting. Do this.
Okay, Siddharth and Ritu got something. Which law will be using? You will be using here. Tell me. Law of periods you will be using here or not? Kepler's law. Kepler did only for the planets. But same thing is valid for the satellite also. Because the way the planets move around the sun, same way satellite move around the planet so t square is proportional to r cube so t1 square by t2 square is equal to r1 is uh, r1 cube divided by r2 cube so geostationary satellite revolve around the orbit of radius small r so R1 is a small r, angular velocity is doubled. So T2 becomes T1 by 2, all of you agree? So it will be 2 square over here. R1 is r. We need to find r2, all right? So R2 is R divided by 2 to the power 2 by 3. All of you understand? Option C. Is it clear? Okay, let us move. Do this. Okay, Ritu and Shitej got something. Hariharan got something. Radius got reduced to r by 2 and mass is constant no, radius is increased mass is constant then what factor the density has to be changed so that as to keep g the same what is g g is capital g m divided by radius of the planet square okay 
increase by factor of two, keeping the mass constant. Okay, mass is constant, but density can be changed. How come? Dense, when we increase the radius of the earth and mass is constant, I'm keeping density fixed then. By which factor did the density has to be changed? Looks strange. And the factor by which density has to be changed to keep G the same. If I keep if I change the density, then how will I keep mass constant? Okay, so it looks like this question is not proper. What, what you guys did, how you got the answer? They are locking the density, right? You can't change it. Radius becomes two times, mass is constant. Yeah, I think let us ignore that mass is same. Let's just ignore mass is same. So just a small correction over there. Now, mass can be written as density four by three pi r cube by r square. This is small g. So small g can be written as four g rho pi r divided by three this is small g so if r is becoming two times okay if r is becoming two times the density has to become half so that g is constant so that is our option d clear to all of you they're asking about density and the radius so first get the expression of G in terms of density and radius. Right now expression of small g is in terms of mass and radius. Mm, you want to do this? Solve, solve this question. All right, anyone close? So here, 
we will be using u2 plus k2 is equal to u1 plus k1 okay so when they come and hit each other they'll be moving symmetrically with each other so this is what will happen at the center they will meet so the final uh, potential energy would be minus of g m1 m2 which is m square distance between any of the two is 2r like this there are three pairs between 1 and 2 2 and 3 3 and 1 so three times of that is u2 k2 is also three times kinetic energy of one of it this u1 is uh, three times the one pairs potential energy which is this okay substitute u2 k2 u1 k1 is zero what do you get u as are you getting d as the answer when you do it like this i hope there is no silly error if there are no silly errors and okay many of you are getting activity so that is fine solve this No one. Hari Haran got something. Aditya got something. Vabho got something. All right, two spheres of mass M1, M2, distance D apart. Gravitation potential where the field is zero. So let's say at a distance of X from here, the field is zero. Field due to M1 will be this way, field due to M2 will be that way. So they'll try to cancel out each other. So G M1 divided by X square minus G M2 divided by D minus X 
whole square is equal to zero. So we are getting uh, m1 divided by x square is equal to m2 divided by d minus x whole square. Take a square root, root of m1 by x, root of m2 divided by d minus x. So we can solve for x also here, d minus x of m1. So x is equal to root of m1 divided by root m1. It looks weird actually, but that's how it is. This is x. Now potential at this location is g m1 by x minus of g m1 by x minus of g m2 by d minus x is what it is. Okay, so let us try to evaluate how do you get the answer quickly. So take g outside and uh, m1 divided by x when you do, so d will come out. So it will be root of m1 multiplied by root m1 plus root m2 plus I think it will come out like this only m1 plus root m2. So if you do the careful calculation, you will get option D. Yes or no? Anybody got D? Yes, Vabo and Hariran got it. What is the difference between this and that? Oh, there's a factor of two. There's no factor of two. Aditya, how come you got two in the denominator? You cannot afford to make mistake on simple questions. Understand that. Understand. Let me see if I can get something. Okay, do this. Weber got something, others? Aryan, Aryan Ja, Shambhu. Radun, Chitaj. Is it very straightforward? Two bodies of mass, this and that, separated by this. At a distance p by 11 kilometer, the intensity field is zero. Oh, I, I think, yeah, from the previous question itself, very similar to the previous question, you'll get p is equal to one. Just try it yourself. Exactly on the same principle, whatever we did previously. Let me see this. Okay, let's do this also quick.
लास्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर टुडे You can use this result. Difference is omega square r. At the pole, radius of the revolution is zero. You are on the axis. Omega is 2 pi by time period. Time period is 24 hours, 60 minutes, 60 seconds. That is square. Okay, calculation is tough, is it? What is pi square closest to? Pi square is like 10. So make it 10. So 4 into 10. So 6.4 into 10 to the power 6. That divided by 2.4 into 6 into 6, the whole square to 1, 2, 3, 10 to the power 6. This is gone. Then sixty four into four two fifty six divided by how much is the denominator? Thirty six into twenty four is two six uh, twelve fourteen two six are twelve six seven four six eight hundred sixty four. 86.4 basically. 86.4 square is how much? The calculation is a bit on the higher side. Weber used calculator to get the answer. 
Okay. Anyways, so since Weber has told us the answer, P is equal to four. Try it your own. Okay. Don't use calculator unnecessarily. You will not get that in the exam. Okay. And there will be some questions in which calculations will be on the higher side, like this. So they are not testing you on the concept. They are testing you whether you can do some calculation under pressure. Okay. Everybody knows how to solve, but only few will get the correct answer. All right. So that's it from my side. We will meet next week and see what we have to do. Probably J main will get postponed to March or something. Not guaranteed though. If it get postponed, then we will see. Like we can have a couple of more extra sessions by for now. Yeah, yeah, CBSE sample per came. Those who are focused in that, do it.